All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. I am here with Miss Brittany Timmons. Brittany, thank you for joining us. Good morning. You all do not want to miss out on today's conversation as we continue um, this month's theme of fundraising and friend raising. We're going to be talking about fundraising, you know, one of our favorite topics, the money, right, in nonprofits. So definitely, definitely tune in. Invite your friends to the Facebook group if they're not a part of the Facebook group so they can join in on this conversation. If they're in the group, go ahead and tag them in the chat. If you're catching us on replay, give us a hashtag replay so we know that you're catching us on replay. And while we wait on others to join, go ahead and give us a good morning. How you doing so that we know you are here. Yes. So um, in recognition, so yesterday was National Nonprofit Day, and in recognition of National Nonprofit Day, Nonprofit Enthusiast has sponsored this month's conversations on fundraising and friend raising. So we're encouraging everyone to stay tuned all month long, and you can learn more about Nonprofit Enthusiast at nonprofitenthusiast.com. All right, Brittany, we are going to dive in. I am so excited. This whole month, we've been talking about money, 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 money. Yes. favorite topics and nonprofits. Um, so I'm just excited to have you on. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey in the nonprofit arena. Absolutely. So I have been in the nonprofit, nonprofit sector for over 14 years, started um, at a mentoring organization where I was um, doing direct services for seven years and then transitioned to a funding organization, hot topic of the hour. Um, where I have had the pleasure of providing grants to nonprofits. So looking at different intricacies of those organizations. And um, I have a degree in social work. So that's what brought me to the nonprofit sector. Um, fundraising, the, the fund, funding organizations are just um, a best kept secret. So I kind of weaseled my way into um, knowing more about them and that I was going to be providing direct services at the funding organization and it quickly transitioned to me um, being the director over their uh, funding program. So it has been an exciting journey. It has allowed me to um, be in a unique position of knowing the intricacies of direct service organizations and then bringing those expertise into the funding organization to allow for us to have a better holistic um, position on how we can best serve nonprofit organizations. So I've uh, done that over the last seven plus years and then I recently transitioned to my own company where I am serving both philanthropic organizations and direct service nonprofits in their um, internal operations. So that is me, a little bit about my background in the sector. Yes, love it. And Brittany, I'm so excited that you are on. If you're listening in, so you heard Brittany. Brittany has experience in funding. And for <laughs> nonprofits, it's rare that, you know, I mean, yes, we get the opportunities to talk to funders, but just being able to be in this um, less formal space and ask those questions. So I definitely encourage you, if you're tuning in during this conversation, ask the questions that you may have um, been wondering. Go ahead and put those in the chat so that we can um, talk about those things through our conversation. I'm going to go to the um, chat really quick. Good morning, Taquana. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> All right. <Hello. laughs> Yes. Yeah, so let's jump right in. So let, let's talk about fundraising. What are some tips that you would give um, nonprofits listening in when it comes to fundraising? Absolutely. So I just want to start by acknowledging the fact that we use the term fundraising and we use it so loosely that it seems like it's easy and it's not an easy task. It's very complex. Um, and oftentimes the nonprofits uh, leaders or the, those who were passionate and started the nonprofit um, fall into the fundraising position. So typically they wanna just run the programs and then fundraising comes after the fact. And it happens more often than not. 
And so with that, it, it doesn't mean that um, you can't develop the skills. You absolutely have to develop them if you want your programs to be as impactful as possible. And so there are some things that I wanna share and kind of go over with those of you who have joined us today around how you start to develop around fundraising and make it, making it intentional. It cannot be the thing that's on the side, um, on the side of your programs. It, it has to work hand in hand. And so um, the first thing is, if, if there are fundraising opportunities as far as education is concerned, take advantage of those. Even if it's a, you know, a video, a replay of this, um, uh, organizations online, often do lives and, and have different web webinars that are available, um, take advantage of that. And also there are some funders who um, encourage education. And so, you you know, the Wells Fargo's of the world, things that organizations of that sort who um, would like, or, like the nonprofits to continue their education and may have funding for that. So seek that out as well, because sometimes these things aren't free and you do have to pay for them. So outside of that, um, I guess I want to speak a little bit to both both a new organization that's stepping into fundraising and even those that are veterans in the space. It you have you do have to create a plan, and I know you've probably heard this on the lives before with Lashina nonprofit enthusiasts. You have to have a plan. Again, it can't be hodgepodge, and that plan does not sit with one person. You have to involve everyone within your organization. So staff, board, the leader, and sometimes you are all of those people and, and you may need to hone in on, you know, friends in the space that are in the fundraising space to say, hey, here's the plan that I've created. Do you have some input? It's, it's, it's also complex in the way that it's not just grants, it's not just individual donors, it's not just corporations. Your plan has to be inclusive of all those pieces because you need to have a diverse fundraising plan. If grants go away tomorrow and 90% of your income has come from grants, then you're in big trouble, big trouble. And the sweet spot for fundraising is um, the individual donors. They are probably the toughest to have, though, um, but there are strategies around that that you need to um, develop within your organization to make sure that you're maintaining and um, initiating those individual donors. So little things like um, having a, a product that you can say, if you donate $20, this is what it produces that's attractive to people within the community. So they know exactly what their funds are being used for. And even if you don't have that, making sure that you follow up, a huge word in the space is stewardship. So you have to follow up with those donors to, to show them if they gave you $500, here's, here's the impact that's being made from your organization. Know that $500 may not be, may not have been specific to a person um, or a specific in, um, outcome. But because they gave it to you, gave you those those funds, you were able to produce X, Y, Z from your organization. So those things are very important. Um, it's again, it's not transactional on any aspect. It should not be. So, yes, you solicit and you receive whether it's a grant or an individual donor, but you have to make sure that it goes beyond the transaction. So following up with them to say, hey, here's what happened. Um, even if it's an, an email update, and then just continue to steward them throughout the year. Every um, communication with those um, potential or actual funding entities should not be an ask. Sometimes it's just information. And I think we forget that oftentimes in the space, it's like, okay, you need the money. And so I'm going to keep asking, I'm going to send you this pledge in the mail. And that's not how you create a relationship just steering into the fundraising, you you want that funder, donor, et cetera, to be your friend, a friend of your organization. And we're not always asking our friends for things. And if we are, then we have poor friendships, I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, I just want to take a pause there because I know I went kind of a little bit a lot 
Um, and so I just wanted to see if anybody had any questions. I cannot see the live. So on yes. Facebook and Lashina's monitoring that for yes. us. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and um, put them in the chat. Uh, good morning, Jennifer. Thank you for tuning in. So um, you were talking about individual donors, and I love that you said every touch or every interaction with the donor should not be an act. Right. Um, that's so true, because just think about ourselves. If someone always came asking us for um, money, like we were the money tree, <laughs> <Brennan. laughs> we would probably start backing up. So that's you know, right. You talked about the importance of stewardship, being able to let them know, you know, um, where every dollar is going, um, which I absolutely love. And you touched a little bit on the relationship aspect, you know, um, building, um, and especially with this month's theme, part of the theme being um, friend raising. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you, you talk about individual donors, what are, where are the places that you feel organizations will find these individual donors? And then what, do, re, what would you recommend as a starting point to building that relationship with that potential donor? Yeah, so I would say the first thing before you even touch the relationship is making sure that internally you have some type of collateral, whether it's a one pager of the programs that you're producing at your organization, the results, the impact, et cetera, something that you can give them, whether it's via email or in person, once you walk away that sits with them. Uh, which also means that you have taken a look at all the intricacies of your organization, which is a part of sustainability and being able to fundraise. So I would start there. And then you, of course, let me, I'm, I'm going to go here. So oftentimes in small business, big business, nonprofit, et cetera, we think that just because someone is our family member or our friend that they are going to buy into what it is that we have going on. Um, it's a misconceived notion and it's not something that we should assume or expect. And so I, I preface that because when you are um, running your nonprofit and you're setting the mission, et cetera, you have to find people who are interested in whatever that mission is or in whatever that program is that you're producing. And that's where you start. So if you're in a room and someone is, you know, you're familiar with their interest in homelessness, and that's the type of organization that you're running, those are the, the people that you start to build those friendships with, not the person that says, oh, I really like helping kids with education, and that's not what you do at all. The likelihood of them being bought into what you're doing is very slim, and so start there. Start having conversations with uh, your constituents within your organization. You should have board members. So if it's one, two, or 15, have conversations. This is going back to being strategic around involving everyone in that fundraising plan to say, hey, who, who is it that you're connected to that might be interested in homelessness um, that has spoken to you around that and have that introduction meeting with them um, with that person, the connecting person involved so that you're not doing a cold call. They're not just sending you out and saying, hey, Lashina said that you're interested in homelessness, so can we have a conversation? Ask Lashina to bring that person in into the conversation with you, and that's that's the best start. And, and let it just be a conversation. Again, don't go in, in asking, hey, we have this need, unless Lashina has spoken with that person already and they said they're interested in you know, going that far already. So those are just some tidbits that I would share there. Did you have a secondary question? So I love that. And I love the fact that you talked about, because oftentimes, especially um, for a newer organization where you're getting started, and let's say you might not have necessarily developed your plan and identified your um, potential donors. So you get stuck in a state of oftentimes cold calling. Mm -hmm. um, so you are doing a lot of cold calls. Hey, we have this back to school bath coming up. You're calling the local store. Hey, can you um, uh, donate this to our upcoming back to school bash without ever having those relationships? And you do want to get to a place where you're having those warm introductions, those handoffs, or um, you're more in a, uh, a friend raising space with them where you have a relationship and then you're, you're making that act because what I found is sometimes when you're you staying in the state of cold calls, 
you a lot of times shortcut yourself and your organization mm -hmm. because you end up asking for number one um less <laughs> and you end right. up getting blessed at, in, yeah. as a result versus when you have the relationship you all know each other and if if you really know this is my full need you can you can confidently ask for that entire need with a, a greater chance of actually getting that that entire need filled um versus every time you have a um, program or activity you're out there calling making cold calls to try to get you know um the programs funded so i love that you talked about having that warm introduction that that handoff, someone who knows that person, um, making a connection um, with you all. And sometimes, it, and we talk about this also for the um, board members. And so sometimes maybe you as a founder are not the person, the best person to make the ask and, and build that relationship. And that's okay. Um, it, that's why, you know, you have your board, you have others um, that um, within your board that has, you know, influences in different sectors and so forth. So definitely, you know, you want to determine who's the best person to make the act to have those conversations. So I love that. Absolutely. And I just want to um, elaborate on one thing you said in reference to the relationship and, and making sure that you are familiar with each other sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I can attest to this at the foundation that I previously worked for. Sometimes the relationship connects you somewhere else. So um, what I mean by that is oftentimes we have people come in and say, hey, they wanted to apply for a grant, but they weren't in the position to ask for the grant based on the requirements of that funding organization. And so because of our, so the organizations that you're asking for funding typically have lots of connections as well. And so in that conversation around what your needs are, it could be that we're making the connection to another funder and it may not be for dollars, it may be for programmatic needs that you have. Maybe it's um, you know an audit and we knew someone who said, we're giving one free audit a year or we've connected you with another funder and, and I'll be just very transparent, um, like Westgate Foundation. So they do funding as well, but they also have, of course, all of their, um, uh, the word is escaping me. Ah, I can't. The reports and the other. No, so it's um, uh, timeshares, there it is. <laughs> So they have timeshares and things of that sort where they have linen. So if you are an organization that's providing bedding for um, or or soaps and things like that for your constituents or for your clients, then that may be a connection because maybe you needed a thousand pieces of soap to give out and you didn't have the funding. But now you have that. We've made that connection for you to receive the soap and the bedding for them from them. And so those are just different things. So when you're looking at your fundraising needs, it's not always monetary. It mm -hmm. translates to money, um, but sometimes it's a product that you need. And so uh, making sure that you're building that into your plan to, plan as well. Love it. Yes, that, that is true. Um, and, and sometimes that's a good way, especially sometimes when you get in the pickle. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's say you have a, couple, a program coming up or something coming up and it, or, or you might be planning your programs for the year and then you realize that you've received all the funding from your donors to cover all of these line items, but maybe there's something in program supplies or something that, mm -hmm. that was not covered and you're able to kind of get that in-kind donation. You might, you know, I would say back to school, bash again just because it's fresh and it just happened you might right. have I'm like I got everything to cover my manpower my staffing my you know everything for the year but what I do not have is um the uh, enough funding to cover our our school supplies and actual backpack so mm -hmm. then you're going to a place that that's what they do and and because you have those relationships being able to get that in the in kind where where for some or some companies it's easier for them to give you the product and the item than it is to actually give you the funds. Exactly. Um, so love it. Any other tips that you'd like to share? Um, I, I, I have some notes that some things that I wanted to um, provide. Let's see. Again, so I want to go back to um, the conversations and you alluded to this, that sometimes you are not the person to ask. So you may be a team of three and 
you're the executive director, but you are not the closer within those conversations. So be intentional when you are building out, okay, if we're going for grants, this is the person that's going to start that relationship with that grantor. If we're going for a corporation, this is the person that's going to start the conversa conversation. Be intentional around as you're navigating those conversations and building those relationships of when you bring in another team member. So you as executive director may not be the expert in the impact that's being made. Bring that person in, especially after you've started to cultivate that relationship um, and understand that, hey, they really want to know more about what we're doing. Bring the expert in. I tend to have been the impact person in both positions, right? In both direct services and um, in the funding position where it's, we were raising funds even as a funder. And so we just, because we are so in tune with the impact that's being made, the passion that we have around telling what's happening is slightly different from a person in an executive director if they're um, a place removed, right? And so that it exudes in conversation and people are more, um, tend to, um, receive it a little bit better um, when you're talking with passion and it's not like you're checking off a box as you're talking. So we we helped 100 students this year with XYZ. You can dive deeper into, we started this program because we knew the needs were, you know, there's a lot of drowning deaths within this county. And so here's how that started. And just, just speaking passionately definitely does make a huge difference. And then that program person may not be the closer. So then there may be another conversation that needs to, needs to be had. And don't think that everything needs to happen in one sitting. You know, it may be you have that conversation, go back to the office or have a Zoom meeting with your um, team and say, hey, here's, here's how that played out. Here's how we need to, to make our next um, step with this individual or donor. I love that you talked about the passion piece and being able to talk about that, the impact. And the reason why, because a lot of times I talk to executive directors and they are hesitant about fundraising or, or um, going out and seeking funds for their organization. And oftentimes I have to share a, not only what I've been through in the sense of like, I have to remind myself that it's not about me. You know what I mean? It's about the people that we're serving. And mm -hmm. the second you remove that, that passion that you're talking about, that people can connect to, um, your donors can see it. When you're out there like, man, um, Johnny came to our program. He walked in this way, but after he left, I mean, he, you know, he met these, he, he did this, this, and this, and, and, and his self-esteem went up. He's been able to, um, um display 21st century skills that you know, know is needed in our workforce that passion just start getting there because number right. one you removed yourself and not thinking about you know Lashina what the what what you know but moreover I'm thinking about Johnny and what Johnny needs and right. why you Brittany need to be able to give um to Johnny and help us change the future for Johnny and others like Johnny. So um, I love that you talked about that. So if you are listening and you are one of those people where it's kind of like, look, I hate fundraising. And, and that's why this month, and we have actually, we have at least three other months this year that's focused just on fundraising, but we know how uncomfortable it can be. Okay, so yes. it's a process it can be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a process. So, you know, um, if you're one of those people, just remember the story is not it's not about you, it's about those you serve. And once you kind of remove you out of the picture and focus on that person, you're able to kind of display that to your donors. And you may be that impact person where someone else is the closer, but at least you can kind of find your space in that um, in, in that um, donation request space. Absolutely. Yep. Any questions from viewers? All right, so we have Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much. Um, she says building relationships is essential. It definitely is. Um, and sometimes in that relationship building phase, you, you may, let's say, build a relationship this year and you don't know why, you don't know what for. And then a, a decade later, that relationship comes right back in. So you never know why that relationship um, has been built, but it is important. Um, in the process. Absolutely. And take notes, make sure that you, I don't care if it's just an, an Excel sheet that says donor XYZ or a funding organization XYZ, 
because you're talking to so many people, you're running programs, you are going to forget. <laughs> and so you need to know that when I spoke to Brittany, this is what we last spoke about, or even, even for your staff to know. And I would encourage um, at least once a month reviewing that to say, here's where we are. Here's the conversations that we had because next month may be an event where you're running into Brittany. And so you need to know that, hey, we sent you X, Y, Z. We just wanted to make sure that you received that impact card just so that you, one, can see, know if they've read it, if they saw it, if they paid attention to it, or if they didn't. And then you know that sending them that impact, impact card is not going to be impactful for them. And maybe it's the call to say, hey, can we have coffee instead? Um, but it kind of helps you maneuver around your best tactics uh, for certain people and certain entities. So it is very important that you keep notes because you will forget. And then also it helps you at the end of the year, if you review everything and see what your return on investment is, what, what are the things that you need to focus on in the next year, whether it's eliminating a tactic that you had or bringing something new in or keeping it the same. If you knew when I sent this, this um, uh, Facebook um, ad out and we received XYZ number of funds in, then you need to do that again, right? So it's fundraising. The plan is not about continually changing things. It's about figuring out what works in all the different pieces that you have implemented. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so Tawana asks, um, who should be responsible for fundraising in the nonprofit, the board or the staff? Good question. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody's responsible. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's responsible for creating the plan in some aspect, and everybody's responsible for executing that plan, even if it is, it may not be on the same level. So everybody won't have the same level of expectation within the plan, but everybody should have a piece. So if you've asked your board, if if the ask for fund or the fundraising plan is that each board member brings in one constituent each quarter. Then, then they are a part of the plan and we need to be reminding them, hey, at the board meeting or in our update emails or newsletters to those board members, you're a part of this plan and we need your one person for this quarter, right? So everybody's a part of it. Love it. Everyone is a part, yes, of the fundraising uh, plan. So, okay, um, now I'm going to ask you to put your um, funding, your funder hat on, right? Okay. What would you say Working in the funder role, what would you say were the attributes of one, the most successful organizations that would constantly, like, let's say, win some of the funds that came through your... Um... That is a very good question, Lashina. I would say that number one is asking for feedback. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me take a step back. One is creating the relationship. They, they didn't just walk through the door and ask for funding on a grant application. It was calling to say, can I have a meeting? Let me tell you about our organization. And not every funding organization allows for that one-on-one -on -one meeting. The larger ones that get thousands of applications may not allow for that. Um, but you do need to at least try just to say, hey, I just want to tell you about it. I saw that you all are interested in these pillars of work. This is what we do and we fall into that. So one, creating the relationship. And then two, if a funder, especially if you have asked for funding and been denied, ask for feedback because it's very important um, that you know what to fix. But then also once you ask, ask for feedback and then you fix it, and then you return for fun to request funding, the likelihood rises that much more. And we as funders go, okay, they listen and like they improve. So we get that they get it. Um, and then there may be aspects within your organization outside of the funding that you ask for feedback on that you need to kind of tweak. That's important as well. That shows, hey, we gave you funding and you you did what you were supposed to do with the funding. But then also we kind of said, hey, we here's some things that we see where you can improve. And just continuing to grow in that is important. Um, and will again, raise the opportunity for you to get funding. And then also, um, it's so funny because I was actually reading, I'm still in the space of, of 
funding organization. And I was reading an application um, and hopefully I don't lose my thought on this. Um, it is, it's escaping me. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh, here's where I was going. So you receive funding from organization, from, from an organization and it's a large amount. The worst thing that you can do is lie dormant after you receive that fund or funds in, in, in getting more funding, right? So I'm looking like, okay, the only grant funding that they received last year was from our organization and they didn't diversify their funding, whether it was from a granting organization or from individual donors, corporations, et cetera. That speaks volumes to your sustainability. And so um, that's like the very wrong thing to do. <laughs> Make sure that you're not just, a, you take advantage of having received those funds where you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, and make sure that you are executing your plan in other ways. So yeah, you receive the grant, but continue to have those funds come in because <laughs> that's a sure way that now we know you're depending on our funds and mm -hmm. it's it's not a dependable aspect. So mm -hmm. make sure that you take advantage of receiving those funds, but continuing to have more come in. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So um, any last tips that you want to provide before we close out today's conversation? Do it. You have to start. It can be paralyzing. Lashina said it. it <laughs> fundraising is uncomfortable. Uh -huh. um, it is complex. It has many pieces to it, but you have to do it and you have mm -hmm. to start somewhere. So don't be discouraged if your start looks different from your colleague's start. You have to do um, what fits within your means at the moment and just continue to grow on it, but start somewhere. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all heard it. Get started. So Get that's your started. homework. We like to end with some homework. So that's your homework. If you're somewhere and let's say you're at a place where you're, you um, don't have a plan or you have a plan and you just haven't looked at your plan, um, your entire team might not be engaged. This is a great time to kind of assess where your organization is. Don't wait until um, giving Tuesday to try right. to come the plan together. <laughs> <laughs> Too late then. You yeah, have to plan right. for, you got to plan ahead. <laughs> right, you got to plan ahead because that happens like every year this organization yeah. You get close to giving Tuesday, all of a sudden you want to create a campaign and fundraising plan um, for the year. No, don't do that. <laughs> you got to plan ahead. So yes, that is your homework. Take a look at where your organization is and areas that you can approve um, to um, implement and, and make sure that your fundraising plan is a living and breathing document within your organization. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brittany, so much for coming thank on you. today. Um, how can people stay connected? Where can they find you? Yes, so I, I don't yet have my website, but I can be reached at 407-900-1629 or via email, Brittany Timmons, T-I-M-M-O-N-S, I should spell the first name, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-T-I-M-M-O-N-S-E-Y-E at gmail.com. There you go. Awesome. So thank you so much for coming Thanks in for having me. sharing the knowledge in the areas of fundraising, our very, very favorite topic. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget that this is our conversation all month long. So we'll see you back here next Thursday, everyone. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.